Could be a massive inconvenience, right? Could ruin your day, could annoy you, could give you the hump. I say to everyone that the first thing with a system should be, hey man, we've got the UNC dunks, and they annoy you and you just want to go like, bang! And again, it might give a reaction and take it out. That would be the ideal trade for me and, and look to take that short. Is getting involved in the market, call it. Whatever. Those asking, by the way, as well, what do I use to calculate? It's what's happening, people? How are we doing? It's Monday morning. Just at the charts. Not a lot happening at the moment. Obviously, we've had a massive sell-off last week, so cautious of just continuously selling. I am still bearish as it stands, but I'm also completely okay with just letting the market develop a little bit after such a big sell-off. The last thing you want to do is dive in like a nutcase. Obviously, got these daily targets here, which are pretty clear and obvious. They'll probably be reaction points, no doubt. If we come in here, we might see a reaction to pull things higher to then take the low out. Uh, but I am bearish still. I just don't want to be shorting too low down. So I'm more than happy to kind of just let the market do its thing at the moment and just see how it develops, whether it wants to pull back deeper, build some more liquidity, maybe take some liquidity out and then drop. If it does, amazing. If it doesn't, we'll see. Gold as well. Finally had that some form of sell-off, if you like, uh, but on the daily, nothing major. This does look more like an all-time high, perhaps, forming. Uh, at the same time, though, this looked like that, and then it didn't didn't last very long. Until you start seeing some form of structural breaks and levels failing, you know, and supply coming in control. Don't think I'd be jumping in this yet. Obviously, we're in this level at the minute. So see if this holds. If this fails, then we are starting to see a shift that we haven't seen in a long time. And if we get that, then I'd happily look for shorts because, yeah, I am still short buyers. I also don't want to just keep longing it as it stands. Yeah, I've set a few alerts in the charts. I'm probably going to take the big man out for a WALK. He's behind me. Uh, and then I'm probably going to go for one myself. It's windy today. It's cold and it's wet. It was nice on the weekend. I had a sick barbecue. It was vibing, feeling like summer and it's raining. But we move. It's all good. I put a coat on. I get my steps in. Make sure you're getting out for your steps. Make sure you're moving. Make sure you're actually exercising. Your body is everything. Your mind is everything. And without it, you will not get to where you want to be because what's the point if you're not healthy and fit? And I got a trim booked in for tomorrow, which I can't wait for, because this is three weeks of premium growth, and man's looking whack, and microphoned, and run down, and about 45, and that's not how we want to look. So yeah, haircut is everything. But yeah, other than that, I want to catch you all in a bit. Just got back from taking the dog for a walk in the rain. He went out, even though he's not a massive fan of the rain, but it's only spitting, so it's all good there. We've got a slow punch out over the weekend, it seems, so I put air in it nice and early this morning when I went to the gym, just to see if it would hold, because uh, it's only gone down a little bit, and it did. I said to Steph, just pop into the tyre garage and just check it out. It's weird, because I used to work in tyres, so I'm very much like, it should be this, it should be that, you know, and obviously I know how easy it is to change a tyre and all that jazz, and how cheap you can get them at cost, and I'm always like, Oh, if only I had a time machine lying about. I can't just bowl into some random garage and be like, what's going on, big man? You call, yeah? I'm just going to use your tire machine. Um, but yeah, they confirm that it's got a puncher, and as always, it's in the side wall, so it ain't repairable. Could be a massive inconvenience, right? Could ruin your day, could annoy you, could give you the hump, or you could just look at it from a different lens. It's one of those things that can't be controlled. I went to the tip last week. It's probably been from there. I've probably picked up a nail or some glass or whatever it is. It's punctured the tire. So unfortunate, it's never in the middle where you can just repair it. But like I say, you know, you can dwell on it, you can let it annoy you, it can ruin your week, or you can just move on. Some of my crypto stuff, um, obviously I'm quite into the altcoins and meme coins. I'm not a fan of Bitcoin itself. It's just too high. I sold mine and fumbled the bag back in 2020. I think I bought in at 8K, uh, sold it for 14, like an absolute baller. Some of the meme coins, they're looking decent. Uh, you know, obviously if we can get some of the levels I'd like on them. You know, if any of them go and do what Dog Whip Hat did, then I'm buying a fat Lambo. No, I'm joking. I'm literally not interested in that. Although I am a massive car head. For anyone that doesn't know, I am a massive, massive car fan. Very big petrol head, but I kind of put those days behind me for the time being. I definitely would like to get back into some nice cars. I used to do a lot of track days and I used to work in like, um, I don't want to say motorsport as such. It was more just track days and tuning cars. But I used to work with a lot of like, Old school Fords, Mark 1 Cortinas, Lotus Cortinas, Mark 1 Escorts, Mark 2 Escorts, Capris. We used to do a lot of Santa Pod days and a lot of like classic Ford shows and stuff. It was good vibes. And then we used to do like the the more performance side of like Focus RSs, Mark 1s, Mark 2s, uh, stuff like that. It was good fun. It was good vibes. I enjoyed it. 
highly modified V8 twin turbo. It's just it's just something about it, man. Like if you know, you know. If you like your cars, let me know. If you don't, then fares. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm gonna make a coffee and then see what the rest of the week holds. It's Tuesday. I've just had my hair cut, feeling fresh. It's nearly three weeks since I've had a trim, which is actually outrageous for me. I don't normally go that long, but my barber was away, so it's all good in the hood there. So, school run was done this morning, and I had to pop to the shops quickly, get some bits and bobs, and then got my hair cut. Uh, I'm just gonna wash my hair, because anybody that has a haircut and doesn't wash their hair after, you're absolutely a psychopath, because all those little hairs get everywhere, and they're getting all everything, and they end up on your pillow. It's chaos, mate. So. Don't be one of them people. If you don't wash your hair after a trim, science up with you in it. And you don't care what you say, your barber can do all the stuff in the world to try and get the hair off. There's always little hairs and they itch and they annoy you and you just wanna go like, bang! Anyway, uh, there was a trade this morning on EU. However, as I said before, I'm allowing myself to add in discretion, purely based on where we are, different things like that. So obviously, you know, if I look at the daily quickly, um, we've had a large sell off to the downside, you know, Clear as day, we're looking bearish. And as I've said before, we've got these targets. I'm not sure why this is showing as an Asia box because it really is not. Um, that's weird. Okay, that's proper odd. But yeah, anyway, and that's Asia, yeah? Right, that makes sense. Um, anyway, uh, so obviously these are the targets we could hit. But as we know, when we get these big pullbacks, we're going to see some form of... Sorry, when we get these big pushes, we are going to see a form of pullback. And whether this level holds... So yesterday we actually took out um, we took out last week's low and then we took out Monday's low. Now often you'll find when Monday forms uh, like a high and a low, if you go over a lot of data, it's something I've seen a lot of time. If the low goes, often the high will go and vice versa. So if you find the Monday uh, here, you can see you know the high goes and then the low will go. Uh, if you go and find a Monday here. The low goes, the high doesn't quite go that day. So obviously it's just a confluence, it's not like a guaranteed thing or whatever. But after seeing all of that, seeing the length of the push down that we've had, we've come into this range here, um, hitting this fair value gap or whatever you want to call it, there's a high chance we could pull back. So me this morning, pairing all of that, this would have been the trade. Another thing I look at is what side of Asia runs first. Because obviously we've built liquidity here, we've ran the liquidity, the next side of Asia, which we know is a point of liquidity, is here. If we're already anticipating we could see that pullback to higher prices, do I really want to be selling here? No. These are the trades that I used to openly take because I would be like, I'm following a rigid, strict mechanical system. There's nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, when you go over a lot of data and you start to notice patterns, it's very easy to find ways to eliminate those L's that you could argue, should I be taking? Because it's all well and good wanting to be in the market, but just getting in the market because you feel like you need to be in the market, that's what can cause you a lot of issue. And you know, I fell down that route where I wasn't being as focused on my trading and I was kind of just trying to make everything easy. I was busy, life, everything was going on. I just gone, I just went, let me just find the most mechanical, easiest way, boom, boom, hit everything and it works. And the thing is, if you hit everything, it works. You're profitable every month, it's consistent. However, you take a lot of L's that you perhaps look at after and you're like, oh, come on, man, I've been doing this for a long time. Like anyone new to the channel, uh, you know, obviously I've shared, I've documented a lot, I document a lot on this channel. You know, I have had a lot of success in trading. I've, this isn't my first rodeo, I've been doing this for a long time. And yes, while I've had a few hiccups, and that's natural, you know, we're always growing and developing. Um, this isn't like my first time doing this. I just tried to make it a lot easier. And in doing that, I took away a lot of the knowledge that I had that could prevent me from taking those L's. So it's always good to remember, don't try and make things too simple because you're busy, but then this thing is one of the things that can make you the most money. So yeah, obviously I've got that on the chart purely because I'm logging the ones that I don't take because I want to log how, how right am I when this happens, build the data on it live as well as in testing. Gold, nothing done at the moment. Um, so yeah, other than that, I'm gonna wash my hair, go for a walk, and I'll pick this up in a little bit. It's Wednesday, just got back from a walk. It's cold today, man, but it's all good. Sun's out, a little bit deceiving. But yeah, just about to go and make some lunch in a little bit. Been a quiet morning on the charts, to be honest. There was an EU short that, again, I'll, um, I'll pull up, but I didn't take it uh, purely due to the fact of I still think we're getting this pullback. Uh, so the short was uh, here uh, after we took this out. Again, same thing as yesterday. We'd ran Asia low, so I wouldn't be taking anything before the highs go, you know, you've got a lot of liquidity. At the same time, you've also got these two highs, which I do think we'll probably take out during New York. Essentially avoided two L's and a BE just by adding in 
again, this whole overall market experience that I've had for the, the amount of years I've been trading now, you know, the deciding to start using that again has been really important to me purely because when I first built this system, it was about make it mechanical, make it just so you can repeat, follow the steps, click the button, job done. And like I say to everyone, the first thing with a system should be get a system, make it mechanical and ask yourself, can you just follow the set, the steps, the trading plan, the rules, whatever you put in place, can you do that? If you can do that, brilliant. Then you can start to look into tweaking or refining. Now, knowing that this plan that I trade is profitable if I hit every trade that sets up within the sessions that I trade, that's great because I know, right, the base and the foundation of this works no matter what. However, I also know that there's some L's that, again, due to my experience and time on the chart, I'm not okay with taking. Not because I don't want to lose, but because I'm like, I could have avoided that and I generally believe I could. So then I'm like, okay, this is the fun part. Now you start to refine, you start to look at it and go, right, how can I make this better so that maybe there's a little bit of a higher strike rate, there's a little bit less of a filter of losses, et cetera, et cetera. Now the problem is you're always gonna probably filter a win. And for me, wins are around one to four, one to five, depending on my stop size. Sometimes they're one to two and a half, sometimes they're one to three, it depends, right? I'm targeting on average 20 pips. I have looked at running them longer, but personally, it's just not a bit of me, especially on EU. Gold, I don't mind running things a bit more because it whizzes about EU, 20 pips is, if you're on the right side, you get 20 pips. So what you need to do then is you need to look at your edge, you know, anyone that's got an edge, just mechanical or whatever. And, and again, you might not want to. If you're okay with hitting absolutely everything and knowing at the end of the month, you make money, that's brilliant. But for me, those trades yesterday, I wouldn't have been happy taking and today, just because my awareness is saying this could happen. Now, obviously, the caveat to that is I could have missed a win and another win and then be like, oh, but all you do is you go, all right, cool. I'm going to wait until the L Street, like until essentially the L Street starts and then I'm going to get involved. And what I've been saying to myself is, you know, I'll stay out of those. So I've stayed out of two L's, stayed out of a BE. The higher chance the next one wins. Now, it doesn't mean I need to be a nutcase, but what it does mean is if for something like phase two, if I want to get involved in that, I know that's probably a higher quality trade if we break out of this overall range because right now this PA is pretty shit pretty messy i want to see something nice the thing with pullbacks is they're always corrective complex you know wiki a little bit annoying a little bit hard to follow uh, you know a lot of people will see this as like a breaker structure loads of people will be selling here which is why i believe we've held up here i do think new york will probably pump it there'll be people looking maybe to sell at this because this is an extreme of the overall push down because it broke this all this liquidity is gone again it might give a reaction and take it out that would be the ideal trade for me and, and look to take that short. If that comes, it might not. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's just the reality of it. I had a few questions, you know, people saying what happened with the one-to-one -one stuff, what happened with this. Again, remember, this is all about me documenting, sharing my findings, sharing things with you all. The one-to-one -one stuff's amazing. The issue is on challenges, it's too long-winded unless you're really ramping your risk up. Now, as I've said before, you know, I, no I normally don't play my risk above 1%. I have played with 1.5 and 2% and I quite like that. I think when you've got decent edge on a challenge. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think it's gambling. I think you just have to know your edge. If you take 10 losses in a row and you know that can happen, then risking 1.5, 2%, even 1% is nuts. Maybe risk half. If you know you could only lose two, three trades a month, and that's what you've seen for two, three years, and that's also got live data in it, then you can easily risk 2%. Do you know what I mean? It gets these phase ones and twos done. You've got to remember back in the day, we didn't have unlimited time. We literally had 20, 21 days, if you like, with FTMO. And we were passing challenges quite quickly and easily. Obviously, the high RR helped. But, you know, for me, it's like the one-to-ones are great. If you're looking for a, a high systemized edge, uh, a high win rate edge, they're brilliant. It just takes a little bit longer and you need a lot of trades. And what it can do is it can cause you to overtrade, especially if you trade one asset. Obviously, you could trade a couple of assets with it. It depends. I've had a few people ask me about assets as well. Like, why do you only trade one asset? For me, there's, there's a multitude of reasons. I do obviously trade gold as well. Um, but I have split them across the accounts. So some accounts trade EU, some trade gold. I may at some point combine some accounts to trade both. But what I find is because of the way I trade and it's very similar, often things sit up at the same time. But also I'm focusing on the probabilities of one system. The problem when you have, in my opinion, a lot of pairs is if you go on an L streak on EU and then you go, right, I'm trading GU and you hit an L streak on GU and then you might go on AU and you have an L streak on AU and then you might go on GJ. You, if you just stuck at EU, you might have had an L streak and then a win. But instead, you've gone and had an L streak across four pairs. And then if you change the pair again, you're now no longer following that probabilistic kind of edge on said pair, right? Now, it always comes down to how you trade. It comes down to the person. For me, 
I've always preferred trading one to two pairs. Um, obviously, I trade the dollar pairs, you know, with gold and EU. Sometimes I look at GJ, sometimes I look at GU, but personally, EU is the one I've traded for the longest. It doesn't mean that's how you should trade. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't trade mul multiple pairs. It doesn't mean anything. It all depends on you. And I think one thing I'm really trying to highlight with the channel is like, you know, trading's, I've always said this, it's like an individual sport, if you like, and you have to find what works for you, make it work for you. And it doesn't matter what other people say, do or think. It's very easy to put technical videos up and people go, oh my God, this is what I've missed. This is what I needed because my edge was quiet today and his wasn't. So he must know something I don't. But what you have to remember, we are in an age where most people are not honest. They don't share the realities of everything. They somehow conveniently miss trades or the losers they miss, the winners they're in. You know, they never show you the loss or the bad side or how many accounts they're blowing up or whatever it is. So just because someone might come online and let's say you were looking long. Uh, let's say today, for example, right, I was looking short on you. That's overall bias for the week at the moment. If I'd gotten in those shorts and then I went online and someone was in longs, automatically your head goes, they know more than you because they're in long. You need, to, you need to learn something else. And it can really run havoc on you. And it's why I always say that like, when you've got an edge, you've gone and actually got that black and white system and you said, right, this is the parameters of the system. Test that system to a T. Does it make money? Yeah, cool. Right, I've got an edge. Now, can I refine and make it better or make improvements? And that can be a long process. That can be a lot of live, intricate trading. And that's where you've seen over these last few months, like I said, I haven't been fully focused and now I'm really getting back into it and I'm enjoying it. But I've always wanted to try and find these little refinements for this edge because it's very powerful. The way I do the find the bias and all these different things is very mechanical, but it allows for me to have, I want it to allow for me to have that little bit of intuition where when I look at trades like yesterday and I'm like, don't think this is a good trade, wouldn't sell from here or whatever, I can go, I'm not taking it and I'm okay with the outcome. You have to be okay with that decision you make. Obviously, having intuition and a gut feeling comes with experience. You can't just be like, I'm not taking that. Because what you've got to be careful of is you're not going down the whole hesitation, fearful to click the button rubbish, and you're just removing all these L's, but you're also missing all the wins. But confident, if you like, the next trade on EU will win. It doesn't mean I'm going to full port my whole account, but I'll probably risk 1.52% on it on the phase two, because then it only needs to run 2.5% and, and it's done. You know, and then you've got the live, and then you're live, and then you can just like focus on making money on it and, you know, just, just getting paid. That's what we do this for at the end of the day. But there's a way to do it without being malicious and blowing thousands of pounds on challenges. I don't ever advocate for that. I'm not saying those that do it are wrong, but what I am saying is those that do it probably have a lot more money or income coming in than they can do it. And also people don't always show the downside because they think it doesn't look good. Everything that you hear online, regardless of who it's from, you should ask questions of it. That's how I've always been from day one. I've always asked questions of everything and I've actually gone and looked at it myself. I've not just gone, oh, he's funded, he makes money. I'm gonna listen to what he says because he clearly knows what he's doing because you never truly know the intricacies of these things. I entered a gold long about half an hour ago. So I'm just gonna pull that up and show you that. So nothing done on EU today. Like I said, I was looking for shorts. I'd much prefer some of these highs to be taken. So just sat out for today, which is fine. And then as I said before, I'm trading other accounts with gold. Um, so I've got some accounts on EU, some accounts on gold. Uh, so I took this long on gold, I'm looking to take up this high, potentially hit 2400, obviously round number, they react well on gold. I'd like to see all time high go, but you know, it's a fair way away. We're gonna get some sort of reaction, I would imagine, from up here. So more than happy to just see this taken out. Um, obviously, only marking these purely because I'm seeing them as sellers getting involved in the market, call it whatever you want, but order flow, whatever. Uh, overall bullish, you know, we're seeing that bullish narrative for weeks now on gold. I had this push yesterday, built all this, came back this morning, there was a nice trade here, but I missed it. I uh, wanted it a little bit lower, didn't quite make it. This morning we've had another push, see it as building liquidity, we've then come back into this level. Uh, and then I've looked and got in on the lower time frame out of that level. Um, so if I go on the f one hour, uh, this was the level, this whole sort of sell to buy. I was looking at that. I see this as stack liquidity. This should absolutely rock it through. Uh, whether it does or not, we'll see. Obviously, you know, whatever. If I go on the MT5, just so you can see for anyone that wants to see. Uh, got in here. So TP is slightly higher on this just because I've done one to five on the old trade assistant. For those asking, by the way, as well, what do I use to calculate? It's this. This is Trade Assistant. I did a video on it. 
um, probably two years ago now. It's called How I Enter Trades on my Mac. I'll pop it up here somewhere so you can look at it. But yeah, I use Trade Assistant. It calculates all my risk. I can automatically set break even. I can trail stops. You can do whatever. It's really handy. Um, so yeah, happy days there. We're running, what are we running here? 3.2%. Um, I've only hit this with 1% risk. So on the other account you saw, that's half percent risk. That's my Darwin X. Um, but yeah, that, but like I say, I'm building and bringing together everything that I've done for a long time. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I'm back in the zone with trading where I need to be. Now it's just a matter of time, focusing, executing. But um, I'm going to call it there. I'll keep you posted on the trade. I might update you tomorrow purely because um, I got me a new bike and it's here. And if I don't build it before she's back, she's going to fight me. So I need to go and build it. I need to put my bike building skills on. I've waited. I waited for the trade before I did it. Not missing trades, like I said last week, making sure I'm locked in in my session. Yeah, other than that, I'll keep you posted and I'll build a bike and I will catch you in a bit. It's Thursday morning, new shoes. I've wanted these shoes for ages, but I refuse to pay the price that Kick Game and Places want purely because I remember when they were like 150 quid and uh, now they're like 400. But I managed to get some dead stock. So, yeah, man, we've got the UNC Dunks. They said there was a slight crease which I can't even see. Ah, here, you're not gonna see it on the camera. There's a slight little crease. Um, but at the end of the day, I wear my shoes. I don't just stick them on a shelf or something. So yesterday's gold position was pretty nasty, to be honest. So I was in here, if you remember. Uh, I was in here and I was looking to take this out overall. Now, obviously we did clear the first high, which usually, being honest, is where I would go. Let me take something off or let me lock something in. However, I didn't, I just moved to full BE. Um, and then I got taken out for a beer. It is what it is. I kind of got married to my bias a little bit too much perhaps and thinking it's going to go higher. The market doesn't have to do anything and there's a good lesson in that. It doesn't mean I'm going to change something. It doesn't mean I'm going to be like, oh my God, I'm an idiot. I should have just got out at one to two. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just means that, you know, unfortunately you didn't take any profit off the table. You wanted more. It didn't happen. And that's because, you know, lately gold, the way it's been moving, it can get in your head a little bit. It can make you think that you're always going to catch these monster moves. It's only going to go up. Obviously, at some point, things will change, you know, and you're going to get those kind of bearish levels kicking in. Um, why do I have a random line on my chart? But yeah, so ended up being a BE. A little bit frustrating. It is what it is. Not looking to rush into anything. I know I need like one trade to pass phase two, and I want it to be a decent trade, not just a trade for the sake of trading. And obviously, I'll keep my eye on gold and see what we get here. But yeah, other than that, I'm going to try my shoes on, make sure they're fit, make sure they're all good. And then... What am I doing today? Today, walk, usual bits and bobs. I've got a couple of calls this afternoon. I need to sort some things. How's it going, people? It's Friday. I'm just sort of locking off for the day. Uh, girls will be home soon. Steph's just gone to pick them up. And uh, I'm going to take them out on their bikes. Mia's got a new bike, which she's buzzing about, bless her. She's riding around the garden last night, living her life. So I'm going to go, just go out. Sun's out. It was raining earlier, but it stopped. So happy days there. Uh, quite a week this week, to be honest, in terms of trades. Obviously, I've missed quite a lot of losses this week on EU due to intuition. Um, there was, I was looking for longs this morning because we came back into better price, but it just ran away without me. So nothing done there. Uh, gold as well, kind of just playing around, had a massive push in Asia. I never like it when pairs go on smoke in Asia. It usually means that London or New York could be slow. I say sometimes these weeks are like this, obviously, you know, if I hadn't used my intuition this week, I potentially could be down four or five percent. You know, that's not to say that's like a bad week or, oh my God, you know, you don't have an edge or that's crazy, you know, that can happen. And I think, you know, even with like a 50, 60% win rate, you could incur like eight or nine losses in a row over a period of like, you know, 50 trades or 100 trades or whatever. It can happen and new data appears all the time. You know, this week is new data for me. I've never seen that many losses on my edge from a mechanical standpoint in three years. You know, and a lot of people ask me, some people asked me last week, messaged me on Instagram and stuff like, you know, what do you do when you see new data? And, you know, to be honest, you look at the data and you ask your questions. You know, you go, right, what can I do to avoid this? Is there anything I can do to change um, or, you know, modify or improve? Or, you know, like for me, I just looked at where we was on a higher time frame. I was like, I'm not buying there. You know, four of the L's were in one day. That's literally, I've never seen that. The most I've seen is two. And the most L's I've seen in a row is four. This week, there was five and two BEs, which is an awful week, right? So... You know, for me, it's like, right, what can I do? Well, I know that potentially this week using intuition's helped. Now, the caveat to that is, obviously, next week, if I use intuition and I miss four wins, do, do you know what I mean? So I have to really look at it. So I'm going to analyze, like, what went down this week over the weekend and just have a look. 
But one thing, I, you know, you've got to remember is there is nothing certain in this game. And, you know, I know I say that and people might go, yeah, I know. But I, I genuinely mean it. Like, no matter what edge you learn, no matter who you learn from, no matter what data you accumulate, nothing's guaranteed and things can change, you know. And we're playing with markets that, you know, are volatile. Things can happen. Impacts around the world. Anything can happen. And you have to really understand and accept that. And, you know, it's very difficult to accept it. And, you know, I guess a lot of people that come into it are like, what, so you're basically saying there's no way to make consistent money. And I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, as a trader, you have to get in tune with the markets. You have to understand, you know, when markets are not worth trading and when they are worth trading. And that generally only comes from experience. You know, it can't be taught. There's no certainty. There's no guarantee. Sorry, my phone keeps pinging. Um, yeah, there's no certainty in this game, you know, and I, and I really want to get that across. You know, you, you take risks in so many areas in your life. Obviously, trading, you've got to be willing to take a risk as well. But you've also got to understand that no matter how much time you're putting in, no matter how much effort you've put in, it doesn't guarantee you anything. And that's not to be negative, but it's just to understand, don't have an expectation. It's very easy to get in a trade, drag the RR tool up, like that's one to five, right, on a 200K, that's 10 grand, right, I've got 10 grand. But if it hasn't hit that yet, you haven't got 10 grand. So then if you lose, you think you've lost 10 grand, but you haven't. You know, and you know, a lot of the things are not spoken about nowadays. Things like this aren't glamorized. People just want to talk about how much money they make. And I've never wanted to talk about that stuff because I just don't see the benefit. I don't see the value in being like, oh, I made money. You know, I see the value in being real and keeping it real, sharing the downsides, sharing the upsides, sharing, you know, the highs and the lows of the journey. And obviously I'm I'm very happy with myself that I avoided those L's this week. But it's also caused a little bit of um not worry, but also like imagine if you just were following mechanical bang bang, you'd have been in trouble. And that's why I said, you know, I'm not just going to follow a raw black and white mechanical plan. I have to add my trader instinct into it. Now, there'll always be someone in the comments that goes, you shouldn't be doing that anyway. I was short and I made 5,000%. Sick. I'm very happy for you. I hope you keep killing it. But you've got to always be willing to grow, learn, develop have the highs, have the lows, and you've got to believe yourself. You know, that's the most important thing. You've got to have self-belief and you've got to back yourself and be like, right, I believe in what I'm doing. One day doesn't define you as a trader. One week doesn't define you as a trader. One month doesn't define you as a trader. What matters is obviously managing risk and, you know, learning. We're always learning. I've been in such good positions in my trading journey. I've made lots of money. I've been in great positions where I thought I've made it. I've cracked it. And, you know, as soon as you get there, I've always said the market will humble you. The market will smoke you on site. And, you know, as soon as you think you've made it all of a sudden there's loads to learn i've seen edges start work not work anymore i've seen new edges be great for a small period of time and then not work markets are adapting you know i was having a conversation with someone earlier and i was saying i definitely feel like three four years ago markets were better to trade it made more sense sometimes when you look at a chart like even looking at gold and like eu today it just doesn't make sense with some of the stuff it's doing so it's kind of like they're the days where you shouldn't trade but they're the days you force the trades and they're the days where you obviously mess up so yeah i'm gonna leave you all with that appreciate you always watching as always if you're not subscribed hit the button share it around it's gonna help someone and as always i'll catch you in next week's video have a great week peace and love gang